I hope your $150 shoes from Nike make you feel cool. After all, having them being made by someone that was being paid 50 cents an hour to make them is totally cool, right? And that mess that you got from Forever 21, yeah, that was made by a worker who was being paid 12 cents per vest, making almost $8 an hour. As citizens of a developed country with rights, when we hear the words made in China, we don't really think about how it was made. Today, I'll be exposing the truth behind sweatshops. I will be showing you how awful the working conditions there are there um, and defining what a sweatshop actually is and what brands still use them today, as well as how we can eliminate them. And it should be clear as to why you should not support sweatshops as a way of production. When most people hear the word sweatshops, they think of an old rundown building filled with rows of workers operating almost like robots. And although the, uh, the visual of sweatshops do vary based on their location, that's pretty much what they are. In fact, the Oxford Dictionary defines a sweatshop as a factory or workshop, especially in the clothing industry, where manual workers are employed at very low wages and under uh, work, working long hours under poor conditions. Something to take into consideration when thinking about a sweatshop is that they thrive where, or when the population needs help. This is why they're so popular in countries overseas, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but in some states there are even factories with sweatshop-like conditions, such as New York, Texas, and California. Also, employers at these sweatshops don't care whatsoever about what the factory looks like, uh, what's being done there, and especially not the workers. As seen in an article on the Missionaries of the Sacred Hearts website, there are several stories of employees talking about their harsh experiences in these sweatshops. In fact, a worker from uh, in a factory in Bangladesh, India, who calls mattresses leaned against the walls for the few hours that they had to sleep before returning to work. In worst cases, workers, <coughs> they ate, slept, worked, and even used the bathroom in the factory. So these workers are literally sleeping in the factory in which they work, while we get to go home, sleep in our nice made up beds, in the pajamas that they have to sew for 12 hours straight. Now that you know a little bit about what a sweatshop is and the conditions there, I can get to exposing the factories that actually use them. So I talked about a little bit about Forever 21 and Nike using sweatshops, but there are so many more that can be added to the list, such as, I know it's going out of business, so it won't really matter in the future, but Victoria's Secret. Now, uh, these uh, sweatshops that Victoria's Secret use can be described as worse than some others. And this is because a lot of their employees are based in Southeast Asia, so they go over to Jordan to work illegally. And that means they're stuck in their factories, so they can't leave without the fear of being apprehended. And Victoria's Secret isn't really doing anything about it because they'll take the free labor regardless. Also added to the list is Urban Outfitters. And this might come as a little surprise to some of you because you might think, oh, Urban is kind of, it's on the pricier side of retailers. So you would think that they have enough money to pay their workers a decent wage, make higher quality products, everything like that, but that's not really true. In fact, Urban Outfitters is already a controversial company as it is. And in 2015, according to according to good on you.com, they were in the midst of yet another scandal, this time regarding labor. So they actually forced, or I guess they tricked workers into working one weekend for free, disguising it as a training day. And this might seem like a harsh reality to face for us, just hearing about it, but these people are actually living it. Now, for those of you that have heard my last two points and are ready to put an end to sweatshops, I have some advice on how you can do that. And it, they're actually pretty um, 
doable, I guess, they're not that hard at all. So the first one is evaluating the clothes you're already wearing. You could go into your closet and make piles of good versus bad clothes for lack of a better term. And you can also, um, if you don't want to wear them, obviously you would want to wear them if they're your supporting sweatshops. You could store them away in your closet, um, or in some cases you might just have to give them away. This is better than actually going out and selling these clothes, that way you're not creating a cycle of making a profit off of sweatshops. The next one is shop ethically. This means supporting your uh, thrift stores, making sure to avoid the brands that are already there that you know come from sweatshops. And also you can find trustworthy products by doing your own research. And finally, you can shop locally. This means going to um, like a flea market or something, buying something that your neighbor actually did. And the final point is probably the most important and could do the most change. It's speaking up. If you have your favorite company and you learn that they're using sweatshops, then you need to demand a change. As Kim Hunt said on relevantmagazine.com, words like demand are pretty strong, but we have to use strong words when it comes to human rights. And even if the companies don't offer a rebuttal or they don't change their ways immediately, it doesn't do any harm to just speak out. In conclusion, I hope the things that I talked about today have changed your outlook on how clothes are made and sometimes the terrifying consequences of them. If you don't find it disturbing that there are, um, if, if you don't find it disturbing that these things are going on in factories overseas and even in the United States, that companies that you all know and love are still using them and making profit off of them, and that it's so easy to make a change just by doing three little things, then I just have one question for you. Are you really willing to endanger somebody's well-being for the sake of looking fashionable? It's time to wake up, become conscious of what we're buying, and save those who can't save themselves by putting an end to switch shots. Thank you.